The f***ing rocket's motors start again and they're trying to land. How are you not excited? It makes bikes not matter. Like we're going to space. What are you talking about? SN10, the spaceship, the starship. Hey everybody, I'm Mike Levy and welcome back to another value field test review. And this gray bicycle behind me, well this is Ibis's $3,000 Ripley AF. A more affordable aluminum version of the carbon fiber Ripley that's been around for many years now. Now there are a few things different about this bike than the carbon Ripley, most notably the frame material and the geometry, but one thing that remains the same is the DW Link suspension system. DW Link uses two co-rotating links and a shock with a relatively light compression tune. Now the key here is also a relatively high amount of anti-squat. And the end result is a bike that, well, when you step on the pedals, it jumps forward with a whole bunch of enthusiasm. Just like the carbon fiber Ripley, the bottom link is actually borrowed from the heavier hitting Ripmo and it rotates on bushings. And I know what you're thinking, bushings are nothing but trouble. But these come with a seven year warranty and they should provide more lateral rigidity than using sealed bearings. But everywhere else, well, that's exactly where you're gonna find sealed bearings including up at the upper link as well. Let's move on to the rest of the frame. There's room for a large size water bottle inside the front triangle, and it uses internal cable routing. Although, because it isn't carbon, it's aluminum, it isn't tube in tube routing. So to remedy that problem, you'll find ports up at the head tube. So you open those up and hopefully it makes it easier to perform a cable change. Let's go over the rest of the trail bike checklist. And that includes boost hub spacing in the rear and a threaded bottom bracket shell. Now around that shell, you'll find a set of splines and that's where you fit an ISCG chain gut adapter if you think you need one. There's also a room for a 2.6 inch wide tire in the back, as well as a 200 millimeter diameter rotor. Being aluminum, this thing is always gonna be heavier than the pricier carbon fiber Ripley. Ibis says that a frame and Fox float shock coming at 7.45 pounds, or about 1.45 pounds heavier than that carbon bike. Ibis also says that complete weights start as low as around 30 and a half pounds, but not this bike. This is the least expensive Ripley AF at 3,000 American dollars, and on my scale, it comes in at 32.6 pounds. But you know what's way more important than how much this thing weighs? It's geometry, and that's actually where it differs from the carbon bike a little bit. With a 130 millimeter travel fork, the front end sits at 65.5 degrees. And that's a full degree slacker than the carbon bike with a 130 millimeter fork, and definitely worth noting in the geometry chart. Now all the other numbers remain unchanged, including the 76 degree seat angle and the 475 millimeter reach on our large size test bike. And speaking of that, I have to point out that this is a large size bike. Ideally, we would have had a medium, the same size as all of our other test bikes, but, well, as you probably know, it's pretty hard to find any mountain bikes anywhere in the world right now. So, the only size that Ibis could find for us is this large, and we think this is an important bike, so we wanted to include it. Let's talk about the different Ripley AF models. It all starts with this one here, our $3,000 Ripley AF. It comes spec with Dior SLX, a rhythm fork up front, and a Fox float shock in the back. Now, if you want to spend a bit more money, 3,300 bucks American gets you the same frame, except with a SRAM NX GX drivetrain. So those are all the details on Ibis's aluminum Ripley AF. It's enough of that. Let's get into how this thing rides. Okay, Levy, you've ridden pretty much every single version of the Ripley before in carbon. Yep. And so let's start with setup. Is there anything different here with the aluminum version? No, it's same suspension design, so that means the same setup. I went with 25% sag, which is 11 millimeters on the Fox shock. You could go a little bit more sag than that, but to me, this isn't that kind of bike. Like, I don't want to run 30 or 35% sag on, that, on this bike. This bike's meant to be like a sporty kind of thing. So 25% sag has always worked for me. 
Um, another thing to mention is Ibis talks about their traction tune, which to me basically sounds like no rebound damping. <laughs> We've talked about this before. Um, I definitely prefer a more controlled feel, so I ran uh, a handful of clicks of rebound damping on that shock for just a more traditional feel. And then up front, I was bouncing around between, you know, right around 77 to 80 PSI in that Fox 34 fork. Yeah. And we don't have control tires for this test, but yeah. you just set up the pressure the same as all the other tires. Yeah, they're Schwalbe tires that I'm super familiar with. Uh, so it was 21 in the front, 23 in the back. Basically just hit the trails and go. There's not a lot to talk about with setup for the Ibis. So Sarah, I've obviously been raving about this Ibis on the climbs. You pedaled it up a whole bunch of vertical as well. What did you think of this thing? Yeah, it's definitely an amazing climber. It feels a lot more um, kind of get up and go than the Giant Trance or the Polygon Siskiyou. Those bikes are a lot more active. They mm -hmm. kind of absorb, like the over the roots, you're kind of absorbing them all. Right. Um, but it feels a lot less precise. Like the right. Ripley feels just so precise. And if you put, you know, some power into the pedals, you just launch forward and it's a really enjoyable bike to climb. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Comparing it to the Polygon and the Giant, Again, those bikes are way more active and I mean, they don't climb terribly. Mm -hmm. They're relatively efficient mountain bikes. They get you to the top of the hill, but I mean, you ride the Ripley back to back against the other full suspension bikes that we have here in this value field test. And it is, there's a day and night difference. And it means that the Ripley suits somebody who still cares about that climbing, who isn't just all about the downs. And I think that's a great thing to have in a trail bike still. There's plenty of trail bikes out there that are slack and forgiving and have all the traction and you could send it, but there's still room for that trail bike that people just want to pedal mm -hmm. and that's it. And that's the majority of your time on a mountain bike ride is going to be spent right? in the saddle climbing, even though you might be, you know, getting to the top of the climb. So <laughs> even though we don't want it that way. Yeah. <laughs> By the sounds of it, in a perfect world, all you'd want to do is climb the Ripley. But that's not the case. You also yeah. have to descend it. There's something about a shorter travel, sharper handling bike that just feels more precise, like more knife than spoon, you know, in that, in that kind of dicey single track where you need to be precise and think about your line choice. And that's the Ripley, and that's the kind of rider that the Ripley suits. Someone who rides like that, someone who's precise, thinks about their line choice, if you're the person who sees a lip and doesn't know what's on the other side of it and just bah, 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 just sends it off, <laughs> land front end high, the Ripley's probably not your bike. You yeah, know? it's not really a plow type of bike. Definitely not. This is a bike for someone who thinks about their line choice, thinks about being smooth, but at the same time, I mean, it's a ton of fun. For people who have spent time on the Carbon Ripley, it sounds a lot like pretty similar. Yeah, very much so. It may be a degree slacker, but it still comes across as that classic Ripley trail bike that is gonna reward a rider who doesn't want that like super forgiving, ground-hugging suspension. Uh, it's more fun than fast on the rough stuff, that's for sure, you gotta think about your line choices more. Uh, if your trails are smoother and tighter through the trees, Jesus, this thing is like, it's like a speeder bike through the tight trees. So much fun to ride, so responsive. Uh, more so than the Giant and the Polygon and the other full suspension bikes we have here. I mean, the Marin has similar amount of travel, it's 125. Mm -hmm. um, and still the Ripley, I mean, definitely feels like a more capable bike than that, for sure. Yeah, the Ripley is gonna be a great bike for someone who wants a 120 millimeter travel trail bike that puts efficiency and energy over just going through all the things. So it's gonna be best suited to maybe smoother terrain, faster terrain that isn't full of chunky stuff. And if you're the kind of rider who likes to cover a ton of ground and a lot of that is rolling terrain, I mean, this thing is gonna be, it's gonna be ideal. Let's get into some of the details about the components. What were some of the highlights of this build? Let's start with the good stuff first. Uh, the standouts for me include those Schwalbe tires that come stock. Tires are not inexpensive. I mean, this isn't exactly an inexpensive bike either. At three grand, it's our most expensive bike here, but at least you won't have to upgrade the tires. They definitely suit the bike's intentions quite well. The other thing that I like, and we're gonna say this a lot in these reviews, the bike's drivetrain. That Shimano drivetrain, shifts so damn good. And then the other standout, the Fox suspension. We've talked about it a bunch. We're gonna talk about it again. That rhythm fork, the float shock, 
this stuff just works really well and it might not have all the dials of the more expensive stuff, but you don't need it. <laughs> Let's get into the pros and cons and let's start with the good stuff. Yeah, the good thing is the classic trail bike is still around and the only thing that's changed is that it's more capable than ever. And if that describes the kind of bike that you're looking for, if you don't want to push around more travel than you need, then the Ibis is a great option. The other plus to this bike, I mean, Sarah, I don't think this is much of a surprise. It's the climbing, it's that DW suspension. It's a super efficient bike. You don't have to worry about flipping pedal assist switches or anything like that, just, just go do your ride and the damn thing works quite well. What about some of the low lights or some of the stuff that you might want to upgrade or change if this were your bike? Yeah, so for three grand, the bike shouldn't really have any components that you'd want to change and that's for the most part the case. The standout for me is the Shimano two-piston brakes, but the two-piston brakes have plenty of power so what I'm talking about is the bite point changes. If the bike sits for 30 seconds, so you don't pull the brake levers, it's at one place, you pull them a few times, the bite point moves out. Bleeding doesn't solve this, and it's actually an issue we have on pretty much all of our Shimano brakes. And I mean, I don't think that should be an issue on anybody's bike, especially when it costs $3,000. All right, Levy, tell me who this thing is for and who should be riding it and where. Yeah, this isn't much of a surprise. The Ripley rides a lot like the Ripley. You know, it's got 120 millimeters, which is the least amount of travel of our group, but it's definitely well-sorted travel. And who does it suit? Well, I mean, the answer is simple. It's somebody who wants to cover a lot of ground, they don't mind climbing, and maybe their terrain isn't super rowdy. If that sounds like you, this is gonna make a good trail bike. There you have it, that's the Ibis Ripley AF. Stay tuned for more videos from the Valley Bikes field trip, as well as roundtable videos where we compare them all.